this is Scott with Learn to Stop Hunger, and today we're going to take a look at how to create a simple wizard using WPF. Uh, as far as I know, WPF does not come with a built-in wizard control. However, the WPF Extended Toolkit does include one of these, so today we're going to take a look at how we can use the WPF Extended Toolkit to quickly put together a wizard. So I've got Visual Studio Community 2013 here. I'm going to go ahead and click on New Project. And we've got Visual C Sharp selected here, and then WPF Application. I'm going to go ahead and call our project Wizard, and then click OK. And Visual Studio will go through the motions of creating a project next thing we're going to want to do is add the WPF Extended Toolkit to this project. So right click, click on References and go to Manage NuGet Packages. Make sure you're on Online. I'll go ahead and click on All. And then you want to type Extended and do a search and then extended WPF toolkit is the one that you want so go ahead and click install and Visual Studio goes through the motions here of doing the installation you'll see the green check mark when it's done go ahead and click close and it's gonna load up this web page here I'm gonna close that because we don't need to see that right now the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is I'm going to add a second page to put the wizard control on. What we're going to do is be launching the wizard from the first page and then the second page is going to house the wizard. So if you right click your project, go to add, and you probably won't be able to see this, but window is the option that I'm going with here. It actually brings this up anyway. Uh, we want window WPF and I'm going to go ahead and call this wizard window and click Add. We've got our wizard window here. Right off the bat, I'm going to change my height and width of that one to match the first window, 350 and 525, just because those worked well for the wizard out of the box. 525, and I'm going to hit Save. Next thing we want to do is add a button on the first page. I'm just going to come in here, oops, and I want that to be inside my grid, so I hide this output window so you can see things a little bit better. Um, using XAML, I'm going to add my button, and let's see, my text is going to be launch wizard, it's going to show up right in the middle of my form. And I'll go ahead and set a height and width on my button here. Alright, so there is my button for the first form. Next thing that I'm going to do is to add code to that button to launch the second page. So I'll click on my event, go to click here, double click. It's going to create an event handler for me. and I'm going to declare a new instance of my wizard window and then I'm going to go ahead and show it as a dialog so that takes care of that now we need to get the second window ready, the wizard window ready for the wizard control first thing we have to do with that is add our namespace for the WPF extended new toolkit. We gotta do XML NS colon XCTK equals it's gonna be HTTP colon slash slash schemas dot exceed dot 
com slash WPF slash XAML slash toolkit. And now every time that we refer to one of the controls from that toolkit, we want to use this namespace. So now I'm going to go ahead and I grabbed an example code right off of the WPF Extended Toolkit web page. I'm going to copy that and paste that in here just so we've got a good example to work with. You can see you don't see a whole lot here in terms of the wizard and that visual designer but what's been added, the actual wizard's been added uh, this property which will close our window when we click finish um, we've got several wizard pages which are separate pages within the wizard got an intro page, title is set, and description text We got a page one, page two, and a last page. Can finish indicates whether or not that finish button is present and usable. And then you can see page one actually we've got some uh, bindings here for what pages we're going to go to with the next page and previous page properties. So the next thing that I want to do is on my first wizard page I'm going to go ahead and add a text box in here. We're going to break this out so we got a separate ending tag. And I'll go ahead and lay this out in a grid because I like grids. We'll put together some column definitions. Oops. So our first column width, I'm just going to say star. I believe I can just do that. Self ending tag second column is just going to be some padding for us here. We'll say 5px and then we'll add a third column where we're going to put the actual text box and that's going to be 2 star for the width. We're going to have two rows. The row that contains our controls and then a row that takes up the rest of the space. Actually try to put width there. That's not going to work. Height is what we want. And we're going to want an auto height. And then our second row is going to be fill up the rest of the space there. Alright, now we are going to have a text block which is going to show our label text of first name and then we're going to have a text box we need to put a name on that so we can refer to it later I'm going to call that first name text box and then I'm going to want to reference the let's see if I get this right here text changed yeah text change method all right and then another thing I want to do is on my wizard page there's a property that I can set that will say can select next page by default I want to say that you can't go to the next page and then we're going to change that once the user provides some text in this text box. So here is my event handler for the text change. 
we're going to look to see if the text box has no text in it then you can't go to the next page otherwise if the text box does have text in it you can go to the next page that's pretty much all I want to do on the wizard window and then if I go back to the main window here once my wizard window has closed what I'd like to do is show a message box that shows the value of that text box. So we'll say, oops, that's wrong. I want to say, hello. And then the value of the text box. And an exclamation point. That's all there is to it. Let's give this a shot. All right, so here's our main window, and we've got this button here. We'll click to launch the wizard. And here you can see this is straight out of the box. This is what the wizard looks like. Here's your title on a page and your descriptive text. Title, descriptive text. You can see our next button is grayed out. Okay, now my label's not appearing. I know what I did wrong here. I'm going to go ahead and cancel. Did a couple things wrong here. First of all, that label, actually the text box, I need to set my grid column on that. And that's going to be two. And then Let's see, if I go back here, oops. Actually, you know what? I don't know this off the top of my head, checking whether or not they canceled the dialog, but what I'm going to do here is just check whether or not there's a value before I display the message box. That's one way to do it. Perhaps even the better way to do it is to check and see if they canceled. So I'll say, if not, string dot is null or empty. And then if they provided some text we're going to show the message box so let's give this a try again hopefully this will work out a little bit better here's our main window launch the wizard click next okay you can see now we do have our label I'm going to hit cancel we didn't get a dialog or a message I should say click the wizard again next I can't click next currently so I'm going to go ahead and type my first name now I can click next next and then finish and that closes our wizard window and then uh, you can see the message box comes up and it properly displays the name that I input so that's pretty much a basic run through of using the wizard control that comes with the WPF extended toolkit hopefully that's been helpful and you can put that to use in your next WPF app